Around two million years ago, our ancestors in Africa emerged from the so-called primordial ooze. Now, research on ancient man has revealed surprising insights into ancient genetics that contradict popular beliefs about evolution. Far from stooped over primitive savages stumbling around scavenging meat scraps, our forefathers were skilled hunters and dangerous warriors with muscular physiques and fast runners with strong throwing arms who could compete with the best athletes. Around 900,000 years ago, humanity experienced a bottleneck caused by a long and severe ice age that lasted more than 100,000 years. Only the most badass, strongest, fastest, most intelligent and adaptable humans survived this bottleneck and passed on their genes. Homo erectus had a large brain and bones that are thick and heavy and show signs of powerful muscle attachments. Now, erectus most likely would have been extraordinarily strong by modern standards and their skeletons show that they endured brutally hard lives. For example, Cabue Man had a muscular build with strong brow ridges and a broad face, and was a strong and adaptive hominid. The Cabwe skull also implies an incredibly robust individual with the most pronounced brow ridges of any known hominid. His massive and heavy face is even more simian in appearance than that of Neanderthal man, with huge inflated brow ridges that are notably conspicuous and extended, particularly at the lateral angles. There's been a lot of debate about what function the brow ridge had, if any. Most ideas concentrate on its role as a feature that strengthened the skull or helped dissipate forces passing through the skull. And researchers have recently indicated the latter was unlikely, instead speculating that it may have had a role in social signaling between archaic human individuals, enhancing friendly or aggressive facial expressions. Erectus also had a tremendously thicker neck than any modern-day man has to support their heavy, elongated skull. Both the back of the skull and the powerful, chinless jaw show areas of muscle attachment that made such a neck undeniable. Similarly, the cheeks were strong in conformity with the dictates of the muscle masses needed to operate that heavy jaw. The brow ridges were tremendously heavy in the Homo erectus race, even on their women. His nose was unquestionably large and wide. The longer, wider opening in the nasal of the skull indicates that very clearly, and there is very little bony support at the top of the nose. Erectus walked upright like a modern man, rather than knuckle-dragging like a gorilla. He was the first of our relatives to have human-like body proportions, with shorter arms and longer legs than their ancestors. Erectus was slightly larger and more powerful than Homo sapiens, and taller than Neanderthals. Their bones suggest that they would have been powerful runners, capable of speeds comparable to modern athletes. Their post-cranial skeletons are generally strong, indicating that the body could generate and resist significant forces. The brain was housed within their peculiarly shaped skull that was quite small, but still clearly human in size. His average cranial volume was 1,000 cubic centimetres. The largest erectus skull ever collected has a capacity of 1,220 cubic centimetres. If you threw your stones and spears well, you were more likely to survive conflicts and pass down your genes to future generations. Hunting is important because more calories in your diet allow you to build larger bodies, brains, and have more babies, all of which are important for evolution. Two million years ago, our human ancestors developed the ability to store energy in the shoulder. In addition to the open swing that our arms can produce, we are the only primates that can twist our hips during a throw. That combination of abilities made hunting a lot easier. In fact, evidence suggests that Erectus used baseball-sized rocks to hunt prey on the African savanna. There is also evidence that ancient humans used throwing sticks, also known as boomerangs, hundreds of thousands of years ago. According to the study, a rock or a hardened stick to the head or legs can easily disable an animal like a gazelle from up to 100 feet away. Success at hunting enabled our forefathers to become full-time carnivores, consuming more calorie-dense meat and fat and significantly improving the quality of their diet. This dietary change caused seismic shifts in our ancestors' biology allowing them to grow larger bodies and brains while also having more children. It is well known that the Homo sapiens lineage evolved the opposable thumb, 
which allowed for many muscle functions previously impossible in the hand and other upper body regions. The muscles of the forearms, whose tendons allowed humans to concentrate its force and abilities within his or her hands and fingers, contributed to significant new abilities. Overall, upper body muscles evolved to handle more activities that required the concentration of strength in those muscles, such as holding, throwing, lifting, hunting and running while holding a weapon. Hunting became more common around two million years ago, possibly as a result of an adaptation that allowed these early hominids to throw objects at high speeds, such as rocks and sticks. In fact, humans are the only animals that can throw at high speeds. Our closest living relatives, chimpanzees, are twice as strong as modern humans, but can only throw at about 20 miles per hour, whereas modern humans can throw at speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour. The composition of muscle fibers, as well as how those muscles are controlled, are the keys to their strength. Humans have more muscle neurons than chimps, and each one serves fewer muscles. This develops our fine motor skills, allowing us to throw accurately and finely craft tools. Chimps have fewer motor neurons, but they control larger amounts of muscle, giving them incredible strength. Furthermore, the majority of the chimps' muscles are fast-twitch fibers that contract rapidly and with great force. However, the majority of a human muscles are slow twitch, meaning they contract slowly, but with greater endurance. Modern human skeletal muscle is on average 1.5 times weaker than that of chimps when normalized for body size. Because there was little biomechanical difference between individual muscle fibers from different species, the strength difference is most likely due to different muscle fiber type compositions. Meanwhile, modern human limb muscles are more likely to contain fatigue-resistant slow-twitch type 1 muscle fibers. Like a gorilla, Erectus most likely had more slow-twitch muscle fibers, and therefore more strength than modern humans. Gorilla-like, too, was the hormonal condition of ancient man. Androgens, like steroids, have well-documented side effects, especially as increased aggression and larger muscles. Testosterone is thought to be both the cause and the result of asserting dominance through aggressive means. A large body of research on territorial aggression has found that elevated levels of circulating androgens, including testosterone, are associated with more aggressive behavior during the breeding season. Indeed, scientists believe ancient man had a strong androgenic phenotype, which means they had elevated male hormones. The researchers claim that they had unique biomechanical adaptations and a hormonal condition that was distinct from any hormonal condition found in modern humans, whether normal or pathological. In fact, the bones of ancient man were up to twice as thick as modern man, and if the attachment points for muscles were any indication, then he was massively pumped up. Indeed, skeletal and genetic studies prove that ancient man would have been a formidable adversary, likely from a life spent stabbing great beasts to death with wooden spears and carrying their carcasses back to his cave where he cracked open the bones to consume the protein-rich marrow. Archaic male hunters would engage in face-to-face -face battle, jabbing long, thick spears directly into an animal's flesh. Erectus was a woodworking, fire-using, spear-wielding beast who strangely enjoyed drilling holes into objects for unknown reasons. In his humble way, Erectus could make tools, including stone knives and hatchets, for his chores. And these hominids appear to have been very particular about their clothing, using stone tools to soften and depress animal hides. The new discoveries suggest that our ancestors were more sophisticated than previously thought. The use-wear analysis tools yield several interesting findings. Analysis of the base of stone tools reveals that the hominid likely attached stone points to sticks, resulting in a sort of spear. It's an important step in human development because it requires combining two materials, a stone tip and a stick, to create a composite tool. Researchers are also investigating whether Erectus used any type of sticky organic material to aid in the process of hafting a spear. They also discovered evidence from use-wear analysis that Erectus was working wood, which did not survive, with stone tools, possibly to convert it into wooden tools. Perhaps the strangest discovery was evidence of drilling. We don't know what or why the hominids were drilling, but they were undoubtedly using stone tools. 
Finally, the analysis demonstrates that they were interested in clothing. A certain proportion of tools were used for working and scraping hides. If they soften the hides, they can use them to make clothes, which no Stone Age hominid would dare to live without. Erectus is the oldest known human race and the direct ancestor of modern man. He evolved two million years ago and was no genius by our standards. He had ape-like teeth and jaws and ate animals, nuts, seeds and on occasion other humans. But he was our direct ancestor and his spawn should not be ashamed of his background. Indeed, far removed from the mental level of the apes, Erectus knew how to wield fire, the greatest single discovery of the human race. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.